When I think about Henry, I think about his cheeks. No one could get him laughing more than his big sister. He'd study her, kick his legs, or twitch his wrists in excitement, coo and giggle at her. Oh, that beautiful sound. Henry arrived early at 35 weeks with a natural mohawk and those chubby cheeks. Before Henry's birth, doctors had diagnosed him with gastroschisis, an intestinal condition that often has a good outcome. No one was overly concerned, but when he was born, it was much worse than anyone had anticipated. He had 90% of his intestines removed in an emergency surgery. Though Henry battled to survive, we realized with shock that he would never be able to grow and thrive on his own. With the remarkable support of Henry's hospital team, we made the heartbreaking decision to give our brave and joyful son the life we knew he would want. We chose compassionate care to ease Henry's pain and suffering. We transitioned home and packed a lot of living into his 291 days with us. It came on suddenly one morning. It was clear that Henry's body was beginning to shut down. While we knew that Henry would not likely rebound from this, I didn't comprehend that he was dying. I was sure I'd have more time with my boy. I held Henry in my arms and was completely overcome by despair. I was terrified to think about his last breath, what he could hear, what he was feeling and thinking. My perfect baby boy. In the early morning, his breathing began to change. The three of us huddled closely. Henry Robert Kloss gently slipped away before the sun rose on January 18th, 2015. The end of our son's life was full of peace. We were engulfed in love. The sorrow was raw, the disbelief blinding. How could the sun rise and set? How could people laugh? How could the world carry on when my baby had just died? I couldn't help Henry. Somehow I let this happen to him. There is no healing after the loss of a child. It feels horrible to feel horrible. Sometimes I feel like my chest will break open. I will see that, in fact, my heart is in a million pieces. Yet it feels horrible to feel okay. In those minutes where I feel all right, maybe even when I can laugh or sing, I feel guilty. I struggle with my lack of confidence, my lost optimism. I struggle with social anxiety, guilt, and despair that resurfaces with no warning and how hard it hits. Our social worker in our palliative care group told me this. Think about each emotion as a tangible item, a ball, for example. Hold the ball in front of you. Acknowledge it. Assess why you feel that emotion. Ask yourself if it's real or perceived. Sit with that ball, that feeling, for as long as you need. When you're finished, put it down and move on. This helps when I experience regret, anger, jealousy, or relief. If I hold those emotions in front of me, they become separate. My feelings are not me. I was pregnant when Henry died. I spent the four months between Henry's death and Truman's birth in denial and sorrow. We had little time to grieve. Truman's birth was overwhelmingly beautiful. The love we felt, paired with the relief and joy that he is healthy, was so pure. Because of these life-changing experiences, we now understand that this is life, experiencing joy and sorrow at the same time. Most days my grief feels more manageable than in the beginning. The waves still crash, but the storms seem further apart. Time doesn't heal, but it helps. 
Connecting deeply with others is most important to me now. Life is too short for small talk. I want to know why you hurt, who you've lost, and what you think happens when we die. I want to know your darkness so I can appreciate your light. Now I write to Henry, and it makes me feel close to him. It is one of the only ways I can parent my son. As Phoebe and Truman get older, I hope they read my blog so they can know their brother. More than anything, I'm terrified that Henry will be forgotten. Not mentioning him or including him in our family feels hurtful and wrong. Recognizing the hugs that Henry sends us from the other side always helps to bring peace to my aching heart. Giving back allows us to feel closer to him. We honor Henry by sharing his legacy with the world. We honor him in small ways too. I talk to him. I make time to be his mom, whether it's writing to him or connecting with another lost mom. I pay attention to how I live my life so I can make him proud. I frequently feel Henry with me. I am confident there's only a thin veil that separates us. Though we will grieve Henry for the rest of our lives, I believe he will always grace us with his precious hugs. His soul is gentle, his spirit brave and fierce. Henry is my hero.